Hey folks, Scott from IT Rockstars. Um, this is the live webinar. Um, I'm just using a new piece of software called OBS Open Broadcast Studio. Um, so I just need to check to see if we are actually live and I can hear things on um, another device. So just give me a second whilst I check this out. Um, two seconds here. Okay, yeah, we are, cool. All right, it's fine, I can hear my own voice. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see me, cool. All right, so let me get up my slides here. And here we go. So today's webinar um, is going to show you an online formula um, on how you can generate qualified leads for your IT business. Um, the type of leads that you're gonna uh, be able to generate online using this, um, it's business to business leads, so it's specifically for IT companies that are looking to generate um, generate a source of leads um, where they provide a service in regards to something like IT support or managed services for another local company. So um, that's what this whole webinar is about. I'm gonna show you the formula um, that um, I've used in the past, I still use today, um, it works really well. In fact, I'm using the same formula to speak to you guys here today um, and all, all our existing followers. Um, so going to get going to some sort of extreme detail in this webinar but you'll find out some really useful information as well as part of this hopefully um, there are some bits to this webinar if you already have the IT Rockstars um, product if you've signed up on our website for that trial um, you may learn some other things within this webinar so I'm hoping I'm giving away complete value to you guys and helping you out that's the whole point of this webinar so we'll just We'll go through the slides as I've laid them out here. I did put these slides together um, this morning, so it's maybe a little bit fuzzy, um, the graphics here, um, but hopefully um, they make sense. Um, cool. All right, so who, who's the webinar for? As I already mentioned, IT companies looking to scale their business. So it's really helping an IT company. I'm here to help IT companies that are looking to generate more qualified leads for their sales pipeline, okay? So MSPs are... They're pretty much the prime candidate for this because it is that business to business lead type of content that we publish for uh, IT Rockstars um, is really geared towards the MSP um, service offering. Um, potentially, it's also for break fix IT companies. So if you're maybe in residential computer repair or maybe you're just doing break fix to small businesses, then this is going to give you some ideas um, and what you can implement to sort of make that next step towards the sort of MSP business to business model. Um, who it's not for is for people that don't have patience. Um, there is a lot of work required for this process um, and you need to get, you need to have a, it's a long-term game play, the long-term plan. It's just like anything else in business. You really have to slog away before you're going to see results from it. But I can guarantee you will see results. So as I say, it's not for people that don't have patience. Okay. Um, and what you will learn. Okay. So how to connect with the right people online. I'm going to show you how to um, basically refine your audience online. So connecting with the right people that specifically is, um, you know, the type of customers that you're wanting to work with. So I think at this stage in the game, if you don't already know the type of customers that you want to work with, a lot of IT companies and um, a lot of MSP owners, they basically just pick any, you know, any company that's going to provide, you know, that, that needs IT support and that's going to be, you know, an existing, added into their existing client base. But I think everyone should, at any stage in their business, really have a tough think about, you know, who your target market is, what is your, what does your ideal client look like? Try and formulate that in your head. It's certainly what I've done here at IT Rockstars for my product, um, to all you guys. I'm looking specifically for IT business owners and I, I help them out with content on, on, on for their websites and their LinkedIn profiles. So I really encourage you to have a real sort of long hard think, even sort of take a sheet of paper and actually write down what that ideal customer looks like what their business looks like, what are the problems that they maybe have, and how you're gonna solve those problems. So if you can almost picture that ideal client, that gives you something to work towards. The other thing you're gonna learn in this webinar is how to build a reputation for yourself online. So you will no longer be seen as just the computer guy that can help with computers, but you'll be seen as the technology authority online. So I'm gonna show you how that's done. 
um, as part of this webinar. Um, and I'm also going to show you how you can generate a source of leads that you can use in your IT sales process. So it's the very first start of the IT sales funnel is actually getting the leads, getting to speak to the right people more than anything else. And those right people, as I say, it comes back to targeting the right people. Um, so what this will do for your business, um, it help you and your company become the trusted technology authority online in the local area. So people will perceive you locally, other local businesses, as that technology authority online um, using this process. And as I say, you'll go from that computer guy, we've got a little image of him up here, He's fixing a laptop. That's something that I used to do. Um, to a, to more of a you know a business technology advisor. Um, looking at that, you know, it's not just about that sort of you know my computer is broken. Please come and fix it. It's actually about looking at business processes and implementing technologies that are going to make those processes more efficient. Um, I'll also give you a source of. I'm going to show you how you get a source of leads um, to start the offline relationship with um, other local business owners. So I'm going to go through that process. How you actually get the leads um, and how you make that next step to actually speaking to those um, potential customers. So that's what we're going to cover in the webinar. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. Um, this is fairly fluid. Um, a lot of the content that I've put, I'm putting into this webinar, I've already kind of chunked down into smaller videos. You can find that all on the time on the IT Rockstars timeline. Um, but this is almost like an overall sort of deep dive masterclass more than anything else. So. Um, if you fall asleep or anything like that, well, you know, that's just tough. It, we, we will have this up here for eternity, so you can come back to any time that you want. Um, the whole process, um, you'll like this stock image I've got here that still has the watermark on it. Um, I kind of like to look at the girl, that's why I put it on there. But the whole process um, will take, it's a 12-month commitment, this. Now, um, as I said, just like anything in business, it's going to take time. Um, and you're not going to find that you're going to get results instantaneously with this. It's very much a long play. We'll discuss the, the reasons for that and the logic behind it in the webinar as well. Um, and it takes, time-wise, it's going to take you 15, it's going to take 15 minutes of your day, Monday to Friday, to do this, to implement this. Um, it will take a little bit longer. Um, if you don't go with this, uh, if you decide not to go with this, um, this, uh, this product that we have, our service, as I call it. So there's a warning um, before we get into the detail on this webinar, is that is the fact that I'm going to actually attempt to sell you something at the end of the webinar. Um, I have something to sell you. Um, it makes this process much easier, and you can find out exactly what that thing is. Um, if you go to itrockstars.co.uk, um, today you can find out what that thing is that I'm going to be selling you at the end of the webinar. But it's just a warning more than anything else. Probably more of a warning the fact that I'm going to try and sell um, on the video, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so here's the high, here's the high level um, overview of the MSP. I've got this as the MSP lead generation formula. It's online lead generation formula. Um, I do have another name for it. It's called the MSP marketing machine. I'm still kind of working out what, what it's going to be called. But this is the high level overview. First thing you've got to do build an online audience. So that is the first thing in this whole process that you have to do. And before you can do that, you have to define your target market and then connect with your target market online. Then the next step is actually to educate that audience. So once you're, when you're building up the audience, you wanna start educating them with authority content. So that's content that's gonna be useful to them. It's going to engage them. They're gonna find it useful. It's not just some bland post that you're putting out there on the web, but it's actually gonna be useful for them in their business. So you educate them and you provide value. You help them basically. Um, and then the third step to it is actually capturing the leads and taking those contact details or taking those leads offline, taking them offline to an actual meeting and get face to face with the business owner. That's the whole process. Um, let me just check to see if there's been any comments. Cool. There hasn't been just yet. That means everything should probably be working. I'm hoping. Um, next, okay, so this is the first step, as I said. So it's define your target market. So who is your ideal customer? We already mentioned this. Have a really good long, hard think. Look at your existing client list. Who's maybe the most profitable? Who's the easiest to work with? That's maybe gonna give you some steer in the right direction. It'll also maybe help um, um, sort of steer in the right direction in, in regards to the industry that you're maybe think that you'd like to work with. Now, as I mentioned before, a lot of MSPs will just pick up any business. It doesn't matter what they've got, as long as it's some sort of Windows type infrastructure. Um, 
but it is really worth doing this and actually defining who your target market is. Now we will, in the next slide, is actually go into what the, the ideal types of industries to work with are locally, but you could niche down on this, so you could nail your niche, um, and that is basically going after one particular type of business and being the, the IT or the MSP experts for that type of business. We interviewed recently um, on the podcast um, an, an MSP uh, business owner, and he only works with car dealerships. Um, and he finds that that, is, uh, that allows him to, uh, what's the word, uh, be more efficient in his business. But you also, you get to know the way that that client works and what that type of business model is. You know what their pain points are. Um, and you can, you can give them a better service if you can really sort of niche down on the type of industry that you want to work with. Um, so, yeah, you've got to find that. Um, most MSPs, though, however, work with a local businesses so they work mainly locally and that i think is going to change over time we've got things like 5g coming in devices are just going to be connected to um to the network um you know wirelessly um, and i think just you know because we've got so many online services and things like that you're going to find that there's maybe not such a big deal about having a completely local it company it certainly does help for a lot of the work that we do um, on windows based machines that sometimes you just need that local presence but that will change over time. Um, but at the moment, I pretty much still think it is local. Um, so that's the first bit is defining that, you know, the ideal customer is going to be a local business more than likely, potentially. Um, if, unless you're niching down, then it's not going to be local. Um, you could be going the whole nation um, in that particular niche. And then there's the company size. Now, this one, I've touched on this before. Um, you really want to be working with companies of a particular size. Anything under 10 employees um, usually is too much hassle um, for a very little return. I've seen that in the past um, in clients that I've worked with. It's just a lot of hassle and you don't get as much money. Um, and they're usually, I mean, they've got less budget as well usually um, for, for a lot more problems. So I tend to avoid any local businesses that have under 10 employees. I'm not saying, you know, completely, don't completely rule it out. There's still some fantastic businesses that are smaller than that. It's just more of an advice if you're really looking to scale your MSP or your IT business um, and make the, make the most of the potential that you've got here. Um, we've got here another side of it, 50. Um, that's probably just the number that I've plucked out of the sky more than anything else. But you find any, anything over more than 50 office-based staff, you usually have an internal IT resource. Potentially less than that, though. Um, but you'll find that you usually have an internal IT resource and it's just, you know, they'll rather have a, an IT manager, you know, an IT technician take care of all of their IT as opposed to an outsourced MSP IT service. So the ideal, that is the ideal size, um, I would say, for your sort of um, types of businesses you've got. And then the type of business itself, the actual industry they work in, there is ones that work much better than others. So um, to give you an example of a really bad, um, I would say it's a, a bad choice for an IT company that provides business to business support would be going after someone like a, a restaurant um, or a nightclub or something like that. You're looking for businesses that have an admin overhead, office based workers with desktop computers and network infrastructure. That's what you're really looking for. So that kind of hopefully helps crystallize the types of businesses that you need to be thinking about that you're going to be going uh, that you're going to um, connect with. Um, online and build that audience so these are some of the examples of the type of uh, industries that work really well for IT companies um, the first one here accountancy firms I love working with accountants the main reason for that is they're actually a really good source for referrals so once you maybe are providing um, IT services for an accountancy firm they will provide you with referrals to other local businesses if you're doing a good job um, and that's because you know accountants are usually seen as a trusted advisor um, so if they've got business owners coming to them with their accounts and they maybe mention that their IT's a bit dodgy, you say, oh, go and try Scott out, IT Rockstars. He's, you know, it's just a referral that works really well. Other ones here, we've got legal firms. So that's lawyers, solicitors. They work really well, depending on the size. Uh, again, probably stay away from the smaller ones. They'll probably pinch you for every penny that they have. Um, recruitment agencies work well too. They've usually got a lot of admin overhead and they're working with bits of software. Um, online services more than likely um, and then real estate agencies they're pretty cool because usually you maybe have certainly here in the UK 
Um, you can have chains of real estate agencies local to the area. So you maybe have five or six premises throughout a particular region um, and that can all be maintained and managed by an MSP IT provider. Then there's again landlords, property management firms as well. They kind of fall into the same bracket. Healthcare is a big one in the States. I don't, I don't personally have any experience with healthcare here in the UK or the States, so I can't really comment on that. I know that a lot of the US-based customers do provide um, services to healthcare and that's a really good uh, type of client to have. Architects, they're again, architects and construction, they're good for referral also because they know who's coming into town, they know who's extending um, their, you know, their, the premises um, and, you know, the, the first point of contact there is usually the new connectivity or an upgrade to, you know, they're getting more desks so they're going to need more desktops, that type of thing. So they're usually they're quite a good source of referrals. And then this is one of my uh, sort of favourites um, just from the last businesses I was in um, was social housing firms and non-profit care sector. Um, some of the larger um, charities here up in up in uh, where I'm based, um, worked, it worked really well providing IT services for them. So they like to th keep things fairly lean. Um, so having an MSP provide the service usually helped uh, reduce the sort of um, requirement for um, taking on a full-time technician or manager, which is, can be quite a big cost saving. And then I put these guys last down the bo bottom and that's mainly because they don't tend to usually have as much money and they, they can sometimes be a hassle as well. So that's marketing firms and PR agencies. Um, and usually they have quite a sort of high demand um, when it comes to actually um, what they're running. Um, and they, yeah, they can be more of a hassle more than anything else. But I'm not saying they are all, they're all like that. Certainly the ones that I work with have been. Okay, so you've defined, you've defined, I've defined, I've helped you define, or this is how I'm defining for myself who my target market is. So these are the types of businesses that I want to work with. They're in one of these, um, one of these sectors. They're between 10 to 50 in size um, and they're local to the area. The next step to this process is actually the IT buyers themselves. So within those organizations, those companies, who is the IT buyer? Um, so my advice to you is go straight to the top, the managing director, the CEO, the business owner. Go to them first, connect with them um, first um, and then go down from there. So we'll get referred down the chain as opposed to going in at the bottom and then getting referred up. So that's why I've got this pyramid here. Usually if it's not the owner of the company or the managing director, the IT buyer is the finance director or potentially the office manager. That's who the buying decisions go with in regards to IT, who do they have or maybe already with a, a relationship with a current IT provider. Um, so these are the things that you have to think about um, and who you're going to be targeting online. The biggest way to do that targeting is on LinkedIn. There is no other social platform available where you can target particular sizes of companies, types of companies, and find the business owner online. You just can't do it with any other platform that I'm aware of. Yeah, you could maybe do it with Facebook if they put in their job description, but it just LinkedIn works amazing for this. It is such a big opportunity just now. Um, it does get completely spammed, I would say, um, LinkedIn, uh, especially if, um, if you've been on it recently, you probably find you're getting uh, copious amounts of IMs and messages, but people still use LinkedIn on a daily basis, um, and it is by far the best way to build an online audience if you're providing business-to-business -business IT support. So there are t two ways to connect um, with people on, well, using to use LinkedIn. So the free version, um, this is what I've used up just until recently, um, connecting with these business owners. Um, and the, the, the issue with the free version, now this is a new issue that they've introduced, um, Microsoft own LinkedIn, um, is the fact that you have limited search functionality. That's the biggest one. So you can only perform a certain amount of searches and you don't have as much reach on the free version. So if someone's out with your network, if you're like a third degree connection, um, you'll find that it's a lot harder to connect with those third degrees and you just can't do as many searches. The paid version, you obviously have to pay for it. It's much quicker to get things done. Um, I'm not going to uh, suggest that you go straight over to the paid version, um, but that's the difference between the two. Um, so we're gonna go and do some an actual example here. Um, 
So I'm going to show you how to do the search on the free version and connect with someone. And then I'm going to show you how to do it on the paid version, what the differences are. Um, so let me just bring up my browser here and come out of this window. I, um, my keyboard has stopped working. Don't tell me I stopped. Real IT looks like a star Scott. Yeah, it does look like it's still working. There we go. All right, cool. So this is uh, the, I've got the paid version here, but I'm going to show you um, what a search would look like. Now, the first company that I mentioned, accountancy firms, they're really good to work with. So if you're doing this on the free version, of LinkedIn, the way that you would do it is you would go to somewhere like yell.com and look up accountants. You can see I've done this before. We've done this already in a video, but as I say, this is the whole overview I'm giving you in this video. So you have all of these accountancy firms in your local area. These are your targets. What you want to do now is find out how many employees these companies have. I'm going to use this example here because I know these guys kind of anyway. So I hit just copy that name and then I'm going to put it into the search bar here in LinkedIn. Now you'll find that there are certain companies that don't um, they don't list their company correctly on LinkedIn. So the employees aren't connected to the right company, um, potentially. The way around that is actually to go to their website. You'll find potentially that on the, um, the company's website, they'll have a LinkedIn logo. And that allows you, so if you go down this on here, yeah, they've got a LinkedIn logo there. And that allows you to bring up the correct company on LinkedIn. So when you're on the correct company on LinkedIn, then you've got this option on the right-hand side to view all of the employees at the company. So this company's got 31 employees. So it's, it's perfect size. It's local to my area. It's the right industry. Um, these guys would be perfect for me as a customer. Um, if I was providing IT services like yourselves. So all you have to do at this point is look for the business owner on this list. Um, and you can usually find them. There we go, managing director. Um, we can click on this profile here. And you'll see here on the free version, it says message. So it will, if you hit message here, it will ask you to upgrade. Now, they change this around as well when you're in the free version. Sometimes it just says connect there and it doesn't say message. Um, so you can just hit connect. If you don't see the connect button, you'll usually find that it's here, connect. And then what I do is I just click connect um, and then just put in a connection request to them. I don't send a message at the point of connecting. I feel it's a bit spammy um, to do that. If you get a connection request and, hey, I'm in the local, you know, I would like to help you with your IT services. Um, when can I come in for a meeting? That is very spammy, very much, whoa, you know, stay back. I don't want to connect with you. You're too pushy. So I literally just connect. And I find probably about 50% of the time um, the business owners connect back with me. Um, some tricks to make the succession, the, the connection success a bit higher than that 50%. Um, Introduce maybe your um, locality within the actual title of your own profile here. Also, be to the point on what it is that you're providing here. So, on my profile here, I have got, I help IT support and manage service companies generate more qualified leads. So, you see my connection request. You see exactly what my business is. You want to do the same for your LinkedIn profile. You want to put in... I help small businesses in Aberdeen, Scotland. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I help improve their efficiencies or their technology efficiencies. I should have thought this one through. But you want to have some sort of catchy line that makes sense. You want to ha in include the locality. If you're, um, if you're going after local businesses, you'll find you'll have a much better chance of connecting if you include the locality where you are because that's something that you both have in common. You're both business owners in the same area. So you're more likely to get that connection request made. Okay. Let me just go back here. Cool. So on the paid version, 
it's a lot easier because you don't have to go to yell.com. You don't have to go and search the companies and make sure they're the right size um, and then find the, the right people. Um, the paid version, which is called LinkedIn Navigator. Now, I have actually not used this that much and I'm paying for it. So it's definitely something that I need to get my head around. So what I'm going to show you is the way that I'm using it. I'm not an expert in this, okay? Um, what you can do is an advanced search. So you've got the option to search for leads or accounts. So a lead is actually a contact, an account is a company. So I would start off with um, searching for a account. So let me bring this up here. Search for accounts. So we want to have our local um, area. That's where we're going to be going after. Now, what I've heard actually, um, when you put in the geo, uh, um, your region here, is if you see other mentions of other um, locations um, that are in your same area, is to include them in this. So I've got here Dainston, Aberdeen. That's like a, a particular area within Aberdeen. Lay Lodge, Aberdeenshire, that's a particular area. These are all other Aberdeens. Um, Minute Law, that's another one. Um, there's a few here, but you want to include these ones as well because it's just where, where companies have listed where their business is. Then you can go into the actual industry. So I can put something like accounting in there. So there are, at the moment, 221 accountancy firms in Aberdeen. Now the next bit we have to do is the company headcount, how many employees. And as I mentioned, we want to go after between 10 and 50. Oh, and look what we've got here. We've got an option for 11 to 50. So from that, I can see that there are 17 results. So there are 17 accountancy firms in Aberdeen, Scotland, um, that are between 11 and 50 heads in size, uh, employees in size. And this gives me a li list of them. These are, these are the companies that I want to add to my target list. And you basically just repeat the same process um, but for other industries, so those professional services industries that I mentioned to you before. That's what you want to do. And then it's basically just a case of connecting with um, the right people um, in these companies on a daily basis. Now, the, uh, the figure that I do is uh, 20 connection requests per day. Um, the reason I use 20 is because I like to keep it under the radar, and if I do more than 20, it's going to just take up too much time more than anything else. So that's the uh, that's the process for connecting and that is the whole process for building the audience. So it's defining the target audience and then connecting with that target audience um, over a period of time. Now I mentioned the 20 a day, that's how many I do. And if we bring up the calculator here, it's 100 connections a week, 400 a month, okay? You get into the habit of doing this connection request on a daily basis. It takes about 15 minutes to connect with 20 people. Um, if you do it maybe first thing in the morning or last thing at night, you're going to find you'll get into that routine much easier. Just do the connection request on a daily basis. You can outsource this. So there are what's known as SDRs. I can't remember what sales SDRs. I can't remember what that stands for. I'm maybe not even using the right acronym. Um, but it's basically people on like Upwork that will do this for you. They'll connect with the right target audience. The only reason I advise against that and doing it yourself is because you'll find that a lot of these uh, Upwork type people are in other foreign countries. They don't know how the business is um, structured. So they're maybe not going to connect with the right people in the business. So I haven't used it myself. If you have used it, I'd love to hear what your uh, success rate has been. Um, and this takes me back to the actually connection success rate itself. So if you're connecting with 400 people per month, you will be lucky if you get a 50% connection request back. So that's a su successful connection request if they connect back. Um, so we can basically just half that number. So we couldn't connect with 200 people. If we put out 400 connection requests, 200 will get back to us and say, yes, yes, Scott, I'm going to connect with you. You look like a cool guy. <laughs> so if you do that every day, Monday to Friday, over the course of a year, 12 months, um, it's, it's quite a lot of work, but as I say, it's just like anything. If you put the habit in, you'll get you'll get used to it. You're going to have 2,400 connections on your LinkedIn profile, and from that, you can start. You can pretty much 
build a reputation for yourself locally um, throughout the industry, um, throughout your local area to other small businesses um, on the IT services that you provide. And this is where the real sort of meat comes in um, to the whole, to building up that authority. Um, and that is providing valuable content. So that's what we've got next um, on the slide here. So the, I call it the, te the technology authority. So you, you, you become the local technology authority. And as I say, the way that you do that is by publishing content um, onto your LinkedIn profile that all of these other business owners can see. Um, and they will start to, they'll start to perceive yourself as the technology authority. Um, and if you do this, if you publish this content on a regular basis, it's going to obviously give a much better um, return um, um, perception to yourself. Um, so what we've got here uh, is make the content engaging and not bland. That can be quite a challenge, actually, when it comes to talking about, you know, managed IT services and things to do with IT. It can be quite a challenge. And the reason for that is because you're talking about technology, so you can quite easily confuse the person reading the content. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, can, it can become a real difficulty. Um, but that's where we come in here, IT Rockstars. We help you um, in regards to that with, by providing you um, white label authority content. Within that content, you want some sort of call to action. So you want them to, they, you want them basically to go and download um, your lead magnet um, or a media resource, something on your website um, where they have to enter in their contact details. You want to have some sort of call to action. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't actually have to be a lead magnet. Um, you could have a call to action, you know, just something simple as please like this um, article um, if you enjoy reading it, if you found it useful, or comment below, or something like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a lead magnet as such, a download, downloadable resource. It's just what we provide at IT Rockstars. So the content itself, um, as I say, we provide content. We can help provide content for you, uh, for your IT business. But if you are going to be going about and doing this yourself, um, as I say, that there's some things that you have to get right with the content. So the first thing is not to confuse your audience. Um, keep it straightforward, common sense. Don't go too technical. Um, the second thing, and this is by far the biggest one, <coughs> excuse me, um, is making the content engaging. And certainly from a, a search perspective, um, a lot of the, the algorithms now on things like Facebook and LinkedIn, and YouTube actually is a really good example of it. They're looking to see how, um, how long someone is engaging on your content for. And there are some um, mind tricks, Jedi mind tricks that you can do within your content to engage people more. Um, that includes opening up psychological loops. So that is something, uh, to give you an example of a psychological loop that I've done here in this webinar, I mentioned at the start of it, we had a warning that I was going to sell something to you at the end of the webinar. That's a psychological loop. I've kind of opened up that loop um, and then you, you'll be wanting to stay to the end to see what that thing is. Well, it's the same thing in your content. You can mention something in your content and then further down actually give away what it is. So that's a psychological loop. That's one way to do it. The other way is what I've got on the screen here. It's called the APP formula. Um, it's by a guy called Brian Dean. He is awesome. I would highly encourage you to follow him um, on YouTube um, if you want to um, increase the visibility of your website. Um, but he's got some really cool stuff. And one of the things that he does is called the APP formula. So it's agree, promise, and preview. So at the very start of your content, you agree about something with the reader. Um, so for example, you would maybe agree on, you know, you're being bombarded. Uh, I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll agree with me um, that email phishing scams seem to be increasing more and more. So that is fairly obvious. I see how much phishing is out there um, and it, see, it does seem to be increasing. So it's something that you're gonna agree on with the business owner that they, they, they can make sense, they can get their head around. And then what you do, this is all at the start of the content. You promise what you're going to do within the article. So I promise that I'm going to help you um, reduce the amount of email phishing or, that you get in your inbox. Or, yeah, that's how you how you'd maybe write it. And then the third thing is you give them a preview. You give them like that golden bit knowledge or nugget. The simplest way to do this, or the, the most efficient or the, the cheapest way or the one that it, it, you can do for free 
is by turning on um, some form of protection in Office 365, mail protection or something like that. You give them, this is a bad example I'm giving you here, but you give them some sort of preview and give them some really good knowledge just within that third, you know, paragraph. I mean, that'll make the, that'll kind of get them into their, the, that'll hopefully excite them and they'll want to read more. Um, and that's where you can really start to engage them. So that's the APP formula. It's what we use at IT Rockstars in our content. So it's not just we're providing this white label content that's, you know, kind of bland. We actually have, there's some psychology going into the, into the actual content itself and the structure of the posts that we provide. So it's a really good one and it works really well um, on uh, on content. You can do it in video too. Um, I sometimes do it in video, um, but I haven't really mastered it for video yet. So you provide, you post out consistent articles. So this is the next slide here. This isn't gonna be, as I say, a quick win. You're gonna build up this audience over a course of a year or even two years or 10 years um, but you have to be consistent about both t connecting with the right people. You also have to be consistent about publishing your articles online. So you can't just publish an article maybe once a month um, and then expect to get some sort of return from it. You need to be publishing on at least a weekly basis. Um, and that's what we do at IT Rockstar is we provide you with four premium white label articles. Um, you publish one, one article a week and do it consistently. Now, it's a bit like compounding interest, which I've got here in that slide. If you don't know what compounding interest is, I'm gonna show you what it is right here. So, compounding interest calculator. Now, I this is something that I wish I knew about when I was 20, when I got my first job. Um, but it's basically, if you put money into a high interest savings account, um, you see how much it gets compounded over time. So if I put in, say for example, I have $5,000 to start an account with, um, and I'm aged, aged 18, and the annual interest rate, let's say it's let's say it's a fund that's actually 8%. So I've got something tracking the stock market. Um, and that period, I'm aged 18, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna save for the next 40 years. I'm gonna save until I'm 58. Um, so we put in 40 years and how much am I going to put in every month? So we mentioned there are four articles every month. Well, let's just make each article $100 each. Um, $400 monthly. That's how much I'm going to save every month. So compounding interest, the way it works here, um, the balance at the end of the first year is $10,000. By year 10, I have over $84,000. But look at this, if we go down here, at year 40, I have $1.5 million. And that's just by putting in $400 every month when I start, when I'm age 18. That's why I wish um, I knew known about this back then. I only found out about about a year ago. So I've only just started this. So I've got about 25 years till I have to retire. So um, I'm not gonna make that type of money, um, but tell your kids and certainly implement this today but this the same this compounding interest formula, or I don't know, it's not a formula, it's just how, how interest compounds over time. It's the same for publishing online. It's the same for your marketing um, and the amount of effort that you put into marketing. Over time, it makes a difference. So I give it the compounding marketing effect, and that is publishing regularly, every week, authoritative educational content. And that content is to say, keep it simple, but make it helpful, make it so that it's gonna help that person in their business. Next, we have the lead magnet. So the lead magnet is, again, it's something that we provide at IT Rockstar. So it's usually a media resource. It's something that um, the business owner wants to download. They have a reason to download it. You know, um, there has to be some sort of, you have to get into the psychology of why they would want to download this material. And then you have to basically title it as such. We do that within the call to action in our content and then download that material. So it's something that they can action on today. So it's some sort of actionable result that they can take away and do today in their business. Um, as I say, it's something that they want to download. So that's the lead magnet. Um, examples of that it could be a white paper, it could be a PDF, it could be an infographic that they can put up on their office wall um, to help um, educate their staff on a particular thing. Like for example, cybersecurity awareness, as an example. 
So once you get people to um, start downloading this content, these lead, uh, this lead magnet, um, as I say, it doesn't have to be a lead magnet, it can be a call to action, it can just be like or comment um, on it. These are actually your leads. This is the start of the sales process. People that are downloading your content online, people that are liking, the people that are commenting, their potential leads for you. Um, and that's, that is it's fairly straightforward. Um, it's not rocket science this, um, but they will turn into your leads. Um, but this is the, uh, the thing, well, this is the thing that you have to do um, with, those, with that information. Um, I'm going a little bit off track here. This was my, 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 my train of thought here. But um, when is a cold call not a cold call? It's when someone's engaged with your content, okay? So if they have engaged with your content, if they've downloaded a lead magnet from your website, if they have commented or they have liked your articles on LinkedIn, that is when a cold call is not a cold call. Your job at this point is to look up that company give them a phone call and speak to that business owner. And you have two reasons why this isn't a cold call. The first reason is they obviously have interacted with your article. You've seen them online. That's the first thing. Hey, Joe, Joe Smith, I, you know, you're on the phone um, and you basically just say, I noticed that you um, downloaded our um, infographic off our website. What did you think? It just starts, to, opens up the conversation more, more than anything else. The second reason is because they are local, they're local in your local area, so it's not a cold call as such. You can say, well, you know, this is Scott, I'm just around the corner from you guys. Um, we really like to um, stop and buy at some point, find out more about your business and, you know, find out a little bit more about yourself. So set a date is the next um, phase within this. It doesn't have to be long, it can be 15 minutes, half an hour meeting, it doesn't have to be long. The whole purpose of this is really just to get it's more of an intro and just to get to know them, potentially find out what one of their pain points is in their business related to technology. Now, the pain point could be something, it could be um, their current IT provider isn't, you know, isn't, you know, maybe ripping them off. Um, it, there's a whole series of reasons. It could be in relation to the content that they've interacted with. So that could be the topic, the subject matter that you discuss in that um, half an hour meeting. Um, but if you can find out some sort of pain point, it's going to help bolster um, bolster um, that relationship going forward because um, you can tell them how you can fix, well, how you can solve that problem for them um, and then eventually it'll lead to a sale. But this this whole process that we're sh I've shown you here today, you know, building the audience, publishing the content, becoming an authority, and then finally getting the leads, this is the, only the start of the sales process. But... It is by far the biggest challenge I had when I was doing IT sales before I actually formulated this. Um, and that was actually to generate a qualified lead. So what I used to do is I used to go to BNI meetings, networking events, cold calling, but with no reason to be cold calling them. Um, and it was, there's a lot of legwork involved. Yes, I did get sales, um, but it just took so much time. And it was very much peaks and trough, just like your, you know, your, 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 your IT at your IT business when it comes to support calls, there was either nothing or there was too much. There was no sort of steady stream of qualified leads coming into the business. And if you follow this process, that's what you're gonna get from it. So, you wanna set a target. Um, so six months today, how many um, qualified leads do you expect to have? If you're gonna connect with 2,400 connections over the course of 12 months, how many of them do you think are gonna to turn into leads or how many would you like? Um, I certainly don't think any IT business could handle that volume if they were all to turn into leads, which they won't, um, but probably a small percentage of that. So for me, it would be something like, I want two um, leads every month, or maybe one a week, maybe four leads every month. Um, and that is a really good, um, as I say, steady stream that'll start to fill up your calendar um, and then your pipeline for sales. Get into the daily routine of connecting with the right people on LinkedIn. That's the second step to this. So um, again, that is just building the audience, but you really do have to get into the routine of connecting. I am guilty of this as well. Obviously I connect with IT business owners to help them with this amazing content that I provide, um, but I am guilty of not connecting with 20 people every day. But um, if you can work it into a habit, if you're more disciplined than myself, you will find that this will definitely work. 
And the third thing, again, is publish educational content that engages, engages your audience and they're going to find helpful and relevant. Um, and this is the, actually the, the, the fourth thing I've got here um, is a really good one that's starting to piss me off, actually, um, on LinkedIn. So if I show you on my LinkedIn feed, bring this up here. You'll see here this guy, one of my connections, a guy called Ian Young here, um, likes this. So he's liked a video. Um, and yeah, okay, it's a video that he's liked. Um, it's someone in a gym that's on a bike. It just, to me, this is like, Ian's basically, this, what this is doing is it's showing me that Ian's just um, watching videos like this online and then liking them. Um, he's not using... LinkedIn for its true potential and then it starts filling up my timeline with nonsense like this Yeah, it's a cool video, but it really has no relation to what LinkedIn should be be used for um, We do have here a couple of connections that have uh, he's put some John words put out an actual article But then here we've got Keith. He's uh, Kyle. Sorry. He's a uh, he's commented on something. So be, be wary about what you're doing on LinkedIn. If you're commenting or liking things, your, your connections will see that, okay? So be very wary of that. Um, it can start to fill up the timeline with a lot of nonsense. So avoid liking and commenting on Facebook style content when you're on LinkedIn, because that's just gonna populate your connections with all that nah content that you see. It's not nah, but it just draws you in and that's what the algorithms want. So that's, that's my top tip. Um, for that, it's the do not do. So this is the sales part. So I've shown you the whole process. Um, and as I say, what you get, $125 per month. And um, there is a one month free trial. So you can check out the content free of charge yourself. And you can use that content just now. Um, you don't have to pay for this. Um, but after that free trial, four week free trial, um, you're charged $125 a month. Now this content alone, you get four premium white label articles. Let's say there's they're, they're formulated with these psychological loops in them. Um, they have the APP formula. They also have calls to action within them. Um, so it's really their top-notch quality. Um, you get an explainer video, so you can publish that out onto your social channels as well as LinkedIn. Um, and that is like a promo video for the campaign every month and um, what it might be. Um, and then there's a, the lead magnet resource itself. So that's a PDF or an infographic. So you get... You only have to do two things here, build the audience and then follow up on the leads. We provide you with the content. So that middle part in the formula, that's what we do. So it's, it's gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of stress, a, a lot of hassle. And it's it's actually, it's an extremely low price, $125. We do have, um, there are other businesses. So I copied this business model from another content provider. Um, and what I would say, our unique selling point at IT Rockstars compared to the other content providers, is the fact that we've, I've, I've worked, and people that write this content have worked in IT businesses, so they can translate the technology and the, and the technology solutions that you have to a piece of content that's going to make sense for the business owner. You'll find you could, <coughs> excuse me, you find that you write an article. Um, or uh, uh, something like that, if you pay to get someone to write an article on somewhere like iWrite or something like that, the person writing an article is not gonna have a clue and they're just gonna copy and paste from other sources on the web. You also get this bonus material, for uh, this is all included, so you get some social posts, I have to do this month, um, that's next on my task list today. Um, there's access into the IT Rockstars masterclasses, we now have the first one up and running. It is an IT recruitment masterclass, so if you are recruiting techs, we speak to a guy called Daniel Welling all about that whole recruitment process and he drops some real sort of golden knowledge on what you should be doing in the IT recruitment process. We cover that in masterclasses. We're gonna be covering cold calling. We're gonna be covering LinkedIn in more detail. Um, we cover all of these types of things that are gonna help you in your IT business. Um, and then the, the third bonus is a paperback copy of my MSP SEO book, which is entitled Bear Attack SEO for managed service providers. So you get all of that as well as part of the service. So all I'd ask at this point is if you have any questions um, in regards to it now, um, you can leave your questions below and I will answer them um, when I get a chance. Um, that is it. This is the first one I'm gonna 
I'm going to refine this webinar. So I'm going to do it again and again and drop in for more knowledge for you guys. But as I say, if you do have any questions, please let me know and I will answer them. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.